October 14th, 2025, something big is happening. No, 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 it's not my birthday. I'm not like predicting the end of the world or some financial thing. I don't do that. But what is happening is Windows 10 is becoming end of life. What does that really mean for you though? And that's what we're gonna cover in this video. If you're using Windows 11 or even possibly in the future me when I'm looking back at this video a year from now and thinking I'm already on Windows 12, you can probably skip this video, you know, if Windows 12 is even out, but you could also stick around and learn something maybe at the same time. Anyways, Windows 10 end of life means that Windows 10 will no longer receive security updates. And while that may not seem like a big deal, it really is, especially if you're running a business. In 2023, there were 26,447 vulnerabilities that were discovered just in that year alone. And security patches keep you from being affected by those vulnerabilities because that's how they fix them. Once they're discovered, they run a security patch and it fixes that vulnerability. And in 2024 alone, just in the first week, there were 612 new vulnerabilities discover, making 2024 on track to grow 20% year over year in the vulnerabilities that have happened. As we go through this video, I do wanna remind you guys we are consultants. So if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on all the social media platforms at NextTechNT. You can also just drop a comment below. That might even be easier. And we'll try to respond to that. If you're a business, you can also go to our website though and schedule a free initial consultation so we can help review some of this for you. Now, let's get into what you can do to help plan for Windows 10 end of life. Now, I think this one's a little bit easier than the Windows XP or even Windows 7 upgrades that happened in the past. Yes, I'm looking at you guys in manufacturing that still use Windows XP for computers with outdated software. I know it's not your fault, but just make sure you don't plug those into the internet. Keep that in mind as you're uh, moving forward. For Windows 10 though, to Windows 11, upgrade, the first thing you need to do is check out the PC Health Check. And there's a link in the description below to an article that walks you through it. There's also a link to the direct download. Go ahead and download that on your machine and find out if your machine is even upgradable to Windows 11 or not. If it's not, then you'll wanna think about upgrading your machine. But either way, you'll wanna make sure that the software you're using on your current machine is compatible with the software to the new machine you're moving to. Most software that I've run into has been compatible for Windows 10 to Windows 11. However, if you do have specialty software, you'll wanna reach out to that vendor and make sure that's compatible with your upgrade. If you use a web browser to get that software, it's probably, you don't have to worry about it because it's all based on the web. But if it's a downloadable software on your computer, that's when you need to reach out to the vendor. If there is no vendor to reach out to anymore, what you'll want to do is you'll want to upgrade one machine, test it out, and make sure it works in a test environment. If you do have multiple machines, make sure you test that machine in a live environment for a few weeks before you roll it out to all the others. Sometimes issues don't come up right away, so we want to make sure that we take the time to find out that the machine will work in production before we roll it out to all of them. It's also a good idea to keep that old machine around just in case something happens. Don't connect to the internet if it's past October 14th, 2025, because then it will be more vulnerable. That's why we're making a plan now so we can get this upgrade completed before we actually hit end of life. All right, finally, now that you've confirmed that your software works and your computer is compatible with the upgrade, you'll wanna to head to the link in the description below that will take you to a download that walks you through the install. The install will be run on your computer. You just kind of click through it. You'll want to do an in-place upgrade for most cases. If you know what a clean install is and that's what you want to do, I would recommend it, but this video is not about that. This video, if you're doing an in-place upgrade, you'll just download that software, run through the steps, it'll restart and you'll be on Windows 11. Just like in any Windows 11 install, there'll be a few questions you have to ask. And then at, once you log back in as your user, everything should be the same, except for that annoying taskbar, which is a link in the description below to talk about how to manage your taskbar. 
that's always annoying because they move it to the middle. I just, I can't stand it. It drives me crazy. And once that upgrade is complete, go ahead and just test a few things out. Make sure it worked. Make sure that you're still happy with it. And then if you're going to be rolling this out to a lot of machines, like in a business, you have a couple options. One, you can do it manually on each one, which will take forever. Um, so make sure you plan accordingly. Or you can probably reach out to an IT team. They have scripts that will run compatibility checks. And they also have scripts that can run the upgrade. So I would recommend reaching out to them unless you have them built internally already. Then go ahead and run those scripts and get that upgrade completed. Make sure you communicate with your end users because that's always the biggest problem in any IT upgrade is when you do something and no one knows about it. So just let them know, hey, leave your computers on or turn it into the IT department for tonight and we'll have it back and ready for you tomorrow morning. So that way you can test things however you need to roll it out. Just make sure you're communicating with your team to make sure it's a success for all of your users and not just your VIP users, which you should probably with your VIP users, just, you know, put a little extra hand holding, holding there and make sure it works appropriately. All right. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. I hope this helps you kind of plan for Windows 10 end of life and make sure that you're able to get that upgrade completed before October 14th, 2025. Since you're still around, make sure you uh, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel as it really does help us create more content like this to help support you and your business. I thank you guys so much and I'll see you next time.